Next, we'll tour a retrofit co-housing community in Lansing, where co-housing members are using existing homes to create an intentional community with a shared community house, community garden, weekly potluck, and other activities. These were the first four homes that started our community and we had a whole consensus decision making process around designing the space, what we wanted. We wanted sitting areas and kids area and garden space and flower space and uh, so we just you know, sat down together and we did that process. We all own our own homes. The only thing that's a little bit you know, unusual is that there's one house that we're purchasing jointly, which is our common house. And that's a shared uh, house and shared space. So we share our outside space and we share a lot of resources, but the properties themselves are owned individually. There's about 10 or so families in co-housing right now. And we are on the end of this dead end street, so I'm gonna take you up to our community garden, which is up here. The places that we work on together is this common garden area here, uh, and then sometimes that corner garden. Other houses that have their own yard space and they take care of their own yard. These houses are special in the fact that they share this common area here. We actually have a condo agreement to share the space. Traditional co-housing involves a group of people getting together where they look for a piece of property, they you know purchase it jointly, they meet for a long time to decide how they're going to design the space, where they're going to put the residences, where the green space, where's the parking. But what we've done is we're buying existing homes in a densely built downtown and you know we're part of the fabric of an existing community and we're not separate at all. This was a Mishta house, it actually still is a Mishta house, so um, we're trying to provide low income housing. So we bought this from the Greater Lansing Housing Coalition that had fixed it up and they had approached us because they knew that we were trying to make improvements in the neighborhood and um, we were fortunate enough to be able to figure out a way to purchase these two duplexes from them. So this is the one and we have a co-houser who lives in here. So we have different committees that do different things. So we have a garden committee that plans garden work parties and then we have a committee that helps organize like our buildings and grounds and then upkeep of our common house. Everybody pays into the common house every month. Um, and to co-own, so we have a working LLC agreement, a limited liability corporation agreement. We just got chickens last summer, and there's a couple families. What we're doing is we're taking turns with a couple different families. Uh, that way, you know, if we're out of town, the other family can take care of it, and the, the week you take care of the chickens is the week that you take the eggs. And this is the artwork that we've been storing for, oh, probably almost five years now. So we just got a grant to move this art over to a community garden so that people can enjoy it again. I think of it the way my dad described living in a small town when he grew up, where everybody knew each other, doors were unlocked, you know exactly how much you can trust the people around you and what you can ask them to do, and we're in a community like that. You can develop that kind of thing in a neighborhood in a big city, sure, you know, you buy a house or something and move in, but it takes a long time to get to know folks, you know? When you move into the co-housing, you start off with a core of you know, 25, 30 people in your immediate neighborhood that you know. You've got that sense of community right away.